Hello students, I am Dr. Uday Bhavkar, Professor of Mechanical Engineering Department. Today we will start Unit Number 3, the performance of IC engines of the subject Power Plant Engineering. Today we will start with the lesson number 1 that is Thermodynamic Analysis of IC engines. Now you can see there again the, the any heat engine is working on the second law of uh, thermodynamics. So you can see from the figure A. Uh, as per the Kelvin plan statement of the second law of thermodynamics, it is impossible to construct a heat engine which will work with the only single reservoir and will convert the all the 100 percent heat supplied into the wasteful work and therefore, it is impossible to construct the heat engine having the efficiency of 100 percent. Then according to that law, uh, second law of thermodynamics, you can see there from the second figure, there is a heat source which is supplying the Q1 amount of heat from the re, uh, reservoir to the heat engine and this heat engine converts the W amount of work and remaining Q2 amount of heat is been rejected to the another reservoir or low temperature reservoir. So, from the energy balance you can see that the amount of work developed will be equal to W equal to Q1 minus Q2. So, by using this uh, Kelvin plan statement of the second law this uh, heat engine is working. Now, the base on the this uh, second law of thermodynamics will go for the thermodynamic analysis of the ice engine. So, from this figure you can see that on the top it is mentioned energy in the fuel. So, when you burn any type of the fuel depending upon the calorie value and mass flow rate of the fuel that uh, fuel will develop some amount of energy by converting the chemical energy into the uh, useful heat energy. Out of the total heat energy converted there are some losses. So, you can see there there are losses like or can some amount of the heat is going as a waste through the exhaust, some amount of heat is absorbed by the cooling water and lastly some amount of heat is going through the radiation. So, after substituting all that losses, you are getting the amount of power available on the top of the piston and that is called as indicated power. So, therefore, indicated power is the power available on the top of the piston after substituting uh, the energy losses uh, like exhaust, coolant and radiation from the energy in the fuel. So, after subsetting all that losses, we are getting the indicated power here on the top of the piston and therefore, we can define indicated power is the power available on the top of the piston. Now, that piston uh, will transfer that amount of indicated power to the crankshaft, but while transferring that uh, power to the crankshaft, there are some losses. So, you can see there, there are some energy losses. For example, while transferring that or when the piston moves from the top dead center to the bottom dead center, there is a uh, friction between the friction that there is a friction between the piston rings and uh, cylinder and because of which I can call there are some friction losses. Similarly, there are uh, pumping losses and unaccounted losses. So, after substituting all that friction losses, pumping losses and un unaccounted losses, we are getting the useful energy that is called as useful brake power and therefore, brake power is defined as the power available at the crankshaft of the engine. So, based on this we can define the brake power. Okay. Now, if you are going to the uh, figure B which will show whether it is a ice engine is an open system or closed system. So, from this figure you can clearly uh, see that here at the inlet we are getting the fuel inlet and similarly you are getting the air inlet. Inside the engine we are burning that fuel and it has been converted into the exhaust gases and that exhaust gases are crossing the boundary of the system and therefore, this ice engine is a open system. Similarly, the work is also crossing the boundary which is as a work output given by that engine. Now, we will uh, show the same schematic uh, can call uh, uh, diagram of the thermodynamic analysis of the ice engine. So, you can see there can call the first uh, line shows or can call energy in the fuel that is been represented by A. So, after burning the fuel inside the engine, you are depending upon the calorie value of the fuel, you are getting the uh, total energy in the fuel uh, in uh, let us say A. So, out of that total energy A available, we have to subtract that can call energy losses like or can call exhaust, coolant and radiation. After subtracting that losses, we are getting the power B which is called as indicated power or power available on the top of the piston and up from that power available from the top of the piston or indicated power. When you subtract the energy losses like friction losses, pumping and unaccounted losses, you are getting the power C which is nothing but the representation of the brake power. So, this is all about the thermodynamic analysis of the ice engines. 
So let us uh, let us quickly take one question there. The heat engine works on which law? There are three options: first law of thermodynamics, then second law of thermodynamics, and third law of thermodynamics. Just think and give the answer. Okay then, uh, today we will stop here, during our next lecture we will continue with the different expressions for and we will co cover the different efficiencies of the ice engine, okay, thank you.